Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. The last time we spoke, I dropped the bombshell of my news, which was, yes. So I'm getting a breast augmentation and that's happening next week, which I can't believe. It's come up so quickly. And I said in my last video that I was going to do a Q&A. So I'm going to do that now. I received lots of questions on my Q&A box. As I said in my video, my last vlog, I'm an open book about this. I've chosen just to be transparent and honest and share it all with you. And I wanna also say from the outset, because this was questioned only by a couple of people, but it might be something that you're wondering in the back of your head, whether or not this is a sponsored surgery in any way or something that I am working on with the surgeon. And the answer is absolutely not. Not at all. When I made my booking with my surgeon, um, I was asked a bunch of patient questions on my questionnaire form, and I didn't even disclose that I have an Instagram. I put down my occupation as being a solicitor, which is a lawyer, because that's what I was doing, nine to five. So the surgeon met with me as L, the lawyer, not as Elle from Elle herself. And this was not anything that they reached out to me to do. I chose them, I made the consultation and I'm not getting any discount or compensation for the procedure. I'm paying for it myself. And if that were different, I would have shared that with you and let you know. So this is not sponsored and this is not a collaborative thing at all. All. just my personal experience and I've chosen to share it only because um, there's not a lot of talk about this out there and I just want to normalize it and share my experience for others who are interested from the conversations that I've had with people in my DMs it's a lot more common than I thought I even had people who I know in real life tell me that they would had this done and I had I had no idea so it's something that I think is a lot more common than what I was thinking it was and it's great to be able to talk about it chat about it with you and yeah just share it openly and honestly okay so let's chat and let's answer these questions I got my phone with me because I'm just going to use my phone to like refer back to them where I'm getting the procedure done I'm getting it done in Christchurch New Zealand that's where I live for ages, I would say to Dave, like, let's do this and go, like, make it a holiday. Like, this is years ago, but I was like, when I get my boobs done, let's go to Australia or let's go to Thailand or something and do it there. But um, I'm really glad that I've chosen to have it done here in Christchurch because it means that I can recover at home. I did watch a couple of vlogs of people who have done it at overseas, and there's, like, nothing wrong with that. You just have to factor in that travel component, too, and the recovery and obviously take into um, consideration any advice your surgeon gives you around when you can travel and that sort of thing. Having kids after surgery, I've spoken about this. Dave and I haven't started our family yet, so it's okay. We, we do want to have a family in the future, and that's why that was, like, the first question that I actually asked the surgeon. I booked in the appointment with him because for ages I've been saying to Dave, like, I just feel so out of proportion and I just wanted to see a surgeon to talk to them about it because I, I wanted to know whether or not I was crazy for feeling that way or whether or not it would, it's their opinion that that could be fixed with getting a breast augmentation. And so I went in, spoke to the surgeon and the first thing I said was, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get this done like after children, what are your thoughts? And he said, honestly like, he did some like skin tests where he was like pulling at my skin and he said, your skin elasticity is really good right now. In his experience, when a woman has um, children post-pregnancy, your skin elasticity may change. It might not change, but it may change and you just don't know until after you've had kids. And that's why he said some people are able to like snap back into shape and other people have experienced more loose skin and more sagging and that kind of thing. And it's just hard to know. It just is based on, on how your body responds. So he said, looking at you now in your current state, I would go and have the surgery now because your skin elasticity is in good shape and he thinks that would mean that my recovery and my end results would be really good. Um, he said that where I'd be getting the implants under the muscle doesn't affect breastfeeding. His patients 
who have this procedure done pre-children they'll come back in um, maybe for another procedure like they'll want to get a tummy tuck or something done later and he said that they don't need anything done to their breasts because they maintain and hold their shape really well throughout pregnancy again that's like a individual experience that people have and I might not have that same experience but he didn't see any reason for me why I should delay this if I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to breastfeed because I can breastfeed so that's the answer to that question and if he said that I couldn't breastfeed with them then I wouldn't be getting the surgery done so another question I've been asked is how long does the recovery take my surgeon estimates that my recovery will take six weeks. Another question I was asked is about time off of work. So originally I had booked um, leave from work. I'm able to work from home. I've got like an at home work set up. So my surgery is on a Wednesday and my surgeon said that I could be back to work on Monday. However, you can't drive for a week after surgery. So he recommended that I work from home just in the comfort of my home. So he thought if I took off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I would be well enough to resume work Monday, but possibly working from home. He said he has patients that go back to work provided that it's an office job. So He's estimating a pretty short recovery and then he also estimates that I'll be back to F45 which is like the type of training that I do. So it's high intensity interval training mixed in with some weight days as well, six weeks later. And when he said that I was like, you only think it'll take six weeks, like surely it'll take longer. So I'm just staying open to that but he reckons that it won't take very long to recover from. There are a couple of reasons why I chose implants over a fat transfer. Number one, a fat transfer is a really subtle difference. If the fat transfer, let me tell you what a fat transfer is as well because it's a very popular procedure at the moment. It's something that's talked about a lot. A fat transfer is when they literally take, um, they harvest fat cells from other areas of your body and they put it in another area. So it's very popular to get the fat taken out of your legs, your stomach, maybe your arms, I'm not sure. And people like to get it put into their face for like fullness instead of using fillers. Um, and also their breasts as well is a popular place. So in order to be a good candidate for fat transfer, you already need to have decent boobs because the result that you're going to get from a fat transfer is likely to be extremely subtle. In a really good case scenario I was told you can expect to go up half a cup size um, and a risk with a fat transfer is, is that your body may not hold on to those fat cells so it might not they might not remain there. I, I read somebody's story on a forum where she she chose fat cells over implants and she said like months later her boobs had just gone back to what they were before and she really regretted spending all that money because they didn't hold and I want to have more than just half a cup size and also with a fat transfer you don't get the the perkiness as well they can't formulate the shape the same was as whereas with implants they can really figure out the shape and the placement and all of that and there's a lot more detail that you can get for particular results. So for what I'm wanting to achieve, implants are what I need to get that result and I chose what I wanted based on photos. My surgeon asked me to go away, look for photos of like the, the boobs that I want, show him this, this is like the look that I want and then he can make a recommendation based on that. So that's not to say that other people might be able to achieve what they want through a fat transfer and perhaps a breast lift. It's all about talking to your surgeon and seeing what options they recommend for you. Did anyone have an opinion that I was surprised about? Um, I think I was actually quite surprised at some of my friends' reactions in real life when I was telling them because I didn't think that it would be a surprise to any of them that I was doing this because I've spoken about it jokingly before like 
I'd like to get my boobs done or something like that. But I think they were actually surprised that I was really going through with it. Out of my close group of friends, I'm the only one who's who's doing this. So I don't have like a, a close friend to ask um, one on one and find out their experience. Um, so I think they were more just surprised and it could be something that other people get done later in life. I'm not sure, but um, I think they were just a bit surprised that I'm actually doing it. They were like, you're actually doing it? And I'm like, mm-hmm. And then they wanted to know whether or not I was getting it done here or if I was flying somewhere else to get them done. <laughs> Let's talk cost because everyone wants to know how much it costs. The first question about um, the cost of appointments. So each surgeon, I messaged a bunch of surgeons and I found out what their consultation cost was. And it's up to you how many surgeons you go and see. I only met with one surgeon because I met with him and I was like, you get me, like you get me, this feels great. Um, I'm happy to proceed. If I didn't really feel like he got me, or I didn't feel very comfortable, I would have continued to look. Each surgeon has their own fee involved with consultations. My surgeon's fee for consultations was $150, and he just charges for your first consultation, and if you choose to go ahead with the procedure, or procedures, like, some people get like the whole mummy makeover, which is multiple procedures. That could be a breast lift, breast augmentation and implants, and it can also be like a tummy tuck. So some people do like a bunch of things all at once. So if, if you book in for the procedure um, or procedures, then um, you don't have to even pay your deposit right away. That was like later. Um, you don't pay anything more. So you just pay the one consult and he has like a, a policy where like it's free consults for life which is nice because you can come back and chat with him about any concerns you have or down the track if you want to get something else done like I said later on who knows maybe I would like to get a tummy tuck after having children again I don't know how my body's going to handle childbirth um i can make an appointment and come and see him and have a consult and it won't cost me anything the other great thing about that policy for me was i had so many it felt like i had so many decisions to make so i went in and met with him had my consult and i left feeling so surprised that he said that i'd be a great candidate for the surgery right now as opposed to later but we could always revisit it later after children if i wished so I left and I was quite surprised about that. And then I decided, you know what, I want to do this. So I went back in and I talked to him again. And then he said, okay, you've got to come in again and we'll do like the sizing appointment. So that was two appointments, but I'd only paid once for one consult. And then I went back in for my sizing to choose my sizing. And we took photos and then I chose my size and then I left and then I changed my mind about size. And then I went back and spoke to him again. So I had four appointments with him <laughs> and I only paid one fee. So it was $150 for the consult and then the surgery fee, it's 15,000 New Zealand dollars, which is a lot of money. That includes my surgeon fees. It also includes the implants that I'm purchasing too, which are not cheap, I think. As I said earlier, there's different prices involved, whether or not you have saline or whether or not you have um, silicon. And also, like, if you're getting, like, a mummy makeover because you're just paying, like, the one surgeon fee, I think that there's different prices involved as well. Like, the more procedures you sort of pack in, the better deals you can get. From my research, the cost of breast augmentation in New Zealand is roughly like approximately from what I could find online um, between 13 and like $16,000 depending on who your surgeon is and what you choose so mine is at the high range the high the higher range of that um, but I'm happy with my surgeon and to pay that money and 
I'm um, fortunate that we'd saved it anyway for travel, so we're, we have it available. But they do have payment plans, I believe, for people who um, want to pay it off in instalments. So that's how much I am paying for my surgery. And then on top of that fee, um, oh, I just had to get my prescription filled, which was $30, which I thought was quite expensive for a prescription. But that's a bit stupid considering my surgery is a lot more money than that. And I'm having it done at a private hospital. So um, my surgeon hires out a theatre room in that hospital. And then um, it's a day surgery. So once I'm like recovered and awake and stuff, I'll just go home. But they did say that if anything didn't go well for me if I didn't react well to the anesthesia I could stay in overnight or something which I would then have to pay an additional price for with the hospital directly do I have any concerns about um the procedure I was saying to Dave I'm not honestly I have no I'm not fearful about the surgery itself I've had two surgeries in my life before I've had my appendix removed from an appendicitis and I've also had my tonsils removed and that was when I was just a child so I haven't had any issues with being under anesthesia what I'm worried about is the recovery I had my wisdom teeth removed this last year yeah the end of last year and that was horrific so horrific I actually had seven wisdom teeth and oh it was so painful um it took me until day five to feel better. So, yeah, I'm not looking forward to the recovery. I'm expecting it to be just awful. <laughs> so that's the thing that I'm worried the most about. What cup size does my 450cc implants put me at? It's estimated to be about two full cup sizes or two and a half cup sizes. So that would take me from an A to a C or an A to a small D maybe. We have to see how they settle in what I, what I lose. <laughs> Has my surgeon been upfront with me about all, all of the risks? Yes, he has. Uh, absolutely, he has. And they have to be, they have to be upfront. That's a requirement in New Zealand. You need to know all aspects all risks and make informed consent based on all of those risks. So the risks that we discussed were obviously things that could go wrong in surgery. We also discussed um, things that could happen post-surgery with settling, um, rippling. Um, I actually have like a, a massive printout with him of all the risks, of all the possible risks and everything that could possibly go wrong. And one of the things that we discussed was breast implant illness and uh, if I chose to have my implants removed. So I'm totally able in the future to get them removed. It's my body, he said, they're my implants. It's my choice if I want to get them removed. Um, he explained to me patients that he's seen who have presented with breast implant illness symptoms and their choice to have their implants removed um, and he encouraged me to do my own research into breast implant illness too which I have done extensively. I said in this video before when I was filling in my patient enrollment I put down my occupation as a solicitor. My specific area of practice is litigation, which means I'm a lawyer that goes to court. Not every lawyer goes to court depending on what area of practice that they specialize in. So my whole job has been dealing with people who are living in the worst case scenario and advocating for them. I am extremely realistic about worst case scenarios. In fact, that is where I live in my brain. And that's kind of like, it's a bit depressing. So I'm I'm the the person who's always the party pooper at, at my work. Um, <laughs> they joke and they call me a handbrake because um, 
clients will want to do something and it's my job to advise them of all the risks. If you do A, then XYZ could happen. If you do B, then XYZ could happen. So it's up to you to decide what you want to do and know the risks that are associated with each decision and then it's up to you whether or not you proceed with that decision. It would be so, so reckless of me to make a decision without properly considering all the risks. So yes, this is something that I have thought about, this is something that I've considered, and this is something that I'm choosing to do, knowing that that's a possibility, knowing that you never know what it will be like um, after surgery, you only know like once you've done it and, and how your body copes. So I'm choosing to do it based on that. And I have that right to make that decision and that's what I'm doing. And the reason why I've chosen to do that is simply because this is something that I've always wanted to do and I would rather give it a try than not give it a try and wish that I had and that's why I'm choosing to do it. I encourage you if that is something that you are concerned about and you research it and you feel still uncomfortable to proceed then not moving ahead with the surgery is the right decision for you and that is okay because we are all different and we have to live with our decisions no one else has to live with them you have to live with your decisions and you have to suffer the consequences if that consequence is bad and that will be the case for me too so I've considered it and I mean I'm not just saying that like blase, I have considered it and I am moving, it, moving ahead with the surgery. I've been asked about how the implants will change my ability to exercise. I like, I actually love working out now. I used to absolutely hate it but now I love it. And I am, I am not looking forward to be, feeling like, I'm just not looking forward to not being able to exercise. That happened with my wisdom teeth as well. So how it will affect my impact to exercise, my ability to exercise. In the first, um, so I've been given like a recovery sheet of what to expect. In the first two weeks, it's expected that I won't be able to do really anything other than just like wandering around. I won't be able to lift, you're not allowed to lift anything heavy, which is anything that is like four or five kilos. Charlie, my, my puppy, I can't lift him. So the first two weeks are gonna be pretty slow. I'm going to try to get up and walk around the house and just, you know, move as I can comfortably and slowly because I think that's quite good for recovery. So that'll be the first two weeks. And then week after two weeks, you can start doing like some light walking. So I might be able to take Charlie for walks and do little like walks around outside. I might be able to go to the gym and do like little treadmill walks. By week six, I'm told that I'm considered completely healed if everything goes well and I don't have any complications. So by week six, I should be able to just be back doing what I was doing, but I'm expecting to have modifications required. And I actually am going to share the entire journey getting back into fitness again for those who have never exercised before and feel intimidated about the process or for those who did previously and they've fallen off the wagon and they'd like to get back into things like just to encourage them that it's possible to start from the ground up and improve in your ability. I have spoken to my trainers at F45 where I go and they are aware of my surgery and they're expecting to have modifications ready when I get back in there so that I'll be able to do different exercises. I won't be able to train chest for quite some time. So I think that will mean that things like push-ups and like other chest exercises will be off the cards for a while and I'll just do modifications of those particular workout, those particular moves that um, work for me. That brings us to the end of all the questions that were asked. Thank you so much for taking the time to ask me a question if you sent one through and I hope that answers them and just sheds a bit more light on this process. As I said, I'm an open book. If you do have any other questions for me, let me know. I'm going to be continuing to bring you along on this journey so there'll be more vlogs in this series and I hope that it's helpful and informative and just kind of 
sheds a bit of light of what it's like to go through it. If you're interested in it or someone else you know is, or maybe you're just curious just because it's something completely different and it's interesting to see what another person's chosen to do. But regardless of your reason for watching, I really appreciate you taking the time to do so. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel and I so appreciate that. And if you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe because I upload new videos every week about my journey doing this as well as keto vlogs and healthy recipes. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.